right, hey there everyone, I think I'll get started. Um, this is going to be a short presentation um, and a little bit of an introduction to SOLIDWORKS Simulation Standard. This is the new um, product inside of Simulation. It's our base level. I thought I'd get started just by showing um, the whole simulation suite here. Uh, so the SOLIDWORKS Simulation, that's the FEA portion, but we also have motion, um, which we can size engines with, we have plastics to test injection molding, we have sustainability to check your life cycles, and flow for your CFD, your flow analysis. Um, so we're going to be focusing on SOLIDWORKS simulation. Um, in this one we have a couple different levels. Uh, Sim Express is the free one that comes with any level of SOLIDWORKS that you have. Uh, Sim Express can be accessed as long as you have a my.solidworks account. You get an access code and you're able to use it. Uh, you can get some basic stress and deformations on your part files. As soon as you get into SOLIDWORKS Premium, however, you get access to Linear Static. Uh, this is a full FEA tool to find the stresses on your parts or your assemblies. Um, now, Simulation Standard is the one we're focusing on today. This gives us a little bit extra. Uh, we get fatigue analysis as well as that linear static. And you can see I also dotted um, a little box around motion analysis. That's because there's two pieces to motion analysis, and SIM standard only gives us uh, the basic motion. Uh, we don't get to see event-based motion. Um, as we get into SIM professional, we get the full motion. We also get all these other types of studies, like the thermal and the frequency. And as we get into Sim Premium, we start including time into our analysis. So we're focusing on that one in the middle, Sim Standard. Um, we have four different levels I'm going to show over the course of this presentation and another presentation. Um, today we're seeing linear static. Does this part work? What are the stresses? Does it break? Um, then we're going to go into the Trend Tracker tool. This is still using your static analysis, but now we're seeing how does it change as I make uh, small changes to the model or small changes to the forces. How is that affected in the part? Uh, then we can take this into fatigue testing. We're saying, okay, I tested my design, it's not going to fail, but how long does it last? How many cycles can it repeat this stress loading until it breaks? And then finally we take it into motion, we take the whole assembly together, we let it move, and we make sure it can move as we expect it to, and then we can size some motors and figure out how fast it can move and so on. Okay, so getting into the actual part now that we're going to be working on. This is a little robot arm. Um, you can see some motors here holding it in different joints. We're going to be looking at just this arm for this presentation. Uh, this arm is held right here next to a motor and it's linked up here to what I call the wrist. And the wrist is going to be holding all the weight as this claws pick up um, a heavy box, let's say. So I want to see, can this arm hold that weight as it starts to bend and as it's held in place by that motor? So before I can start running that analysis, I need to understand what a static analysis is. There's a couple portions to it. It's in the little simulation tree, and we just have to go in order and fill them in. Uh, starting from the top, we apply a material. The material is what tells SOLIDWORKS what the yield strength is, how the part bends, what's the stress strain curve. That's all located inside the uh, material data, and we have a whole database where you can pick that material from. Uh, then we get to the restraints. The restraints are a combination of the connections and the fixtures here in this window. Uh, the connections are things like bolts or springs. You use them more when you have an assembly. When you're just using a part file, you don't really have any connections to add, but fixtures are very important. They're like our boundary conditions. They're how we tell the, the uh, solver this part is sitting on the ground, or this part is going to move until it hits a certain surface. So that's our boundary conditions. Uh, then we get into loads. That's our forces, our pressures, our temperatures, that kind of thing. Then we discretize the model, and we run and we get our results. So how do we apply this to the arm? Well, looking at the picture I have here, I've drawn a little circle on this arm here, on the left-hand side. That was done using a split line, so it's not actual physical geometry I've made, I've just split the faces. That circle is where 
the motor is bonded to this aluminum arm. So I'm going to say, okay, that uh, motor is bonded there. It's going to be holding the torque, so it's not going to be able to move or rotate. So I'm fixing that face where the motor is. Uh, then I'm saying, okay, the claws are picking up a certain amount of weight. That weight's going to translate to a five pound force here on the end of the arm. After setting that up, I need to decide uh, what are the goals of this whole simulation? What's the point of me running this? So I have these two on the right hand side, these two questions. Does my maximum stress stay smaller than the yield stress? That's me asking, does my part break? Uh, then the next part is the minimum factor of safety greater than two. Well, of course I don't want the part to break, but then I also need to have a little bit of a buffer zone. A zone that, in case I was over-idealizing my simulation here, or in case there's a little bit of a defect in the part when it's actually made. So a little bit of a buffer there. Uh, so let's get into SOLIDWORKS. So here's that model. There's that circle I was talking about here on the left-hand side. Um, I've got a default configuration that I'm active here. And I'm just going to go and start a new simulation, start a new addition. So I would go to SOLIDWORKS add-ins and make sure simulation was turned on, come over to my new tab, and add in a new study. So I told you about all these different types. In SOLIDWORKS standard, you would have static and fatigue only. I'd hit static, I'd hit OK, and there's that tree that we saw before. Um, i got to right click, I've got to edit a material. And here's my entire material database. Um, as we're looking at these different parts, different materials, you'll see some of the data for those materials is in color here on the right hand side. The red color is what is required to be able to run this simulation study. It needs these numbers to be able to run the solver. The blue ones are just bonus and the black ones aren't used in this particular simulation. So once I've chosen the one I need, I hit apply and I hit OK. Uh, then going to fixtures, I'm going to do a fixed geometry on that face. You can see all the other different types. Fixtures are separated out into different types of degrees of freedom. Uh, SOLIDWORKS, just like in real life, we have three rotational degrees of freedom and three translational degrees of freedom. So all these choices are different ways you can stop and move those degrees of freedom. The fixed one uh, keeps all three translation and all three rotation from moving at all. It totally fixes it in place. Uh, then I do my load in. Just like I was saying before, we have a tons of different loading types. Uh, we're just going to stick with force, but you can just take a look at the other ones that we have here and you would have access to all of these in sim standard. So I'll do a force, apply that on the face, and put that as 5 pounds. Now I'm lucky that this is going in the correct direction. If it wasn't, I always have the option of coming here to select a direction and choosing which way it needs to go. Now you did see gravity here in this list. I generally don't turn gravity on unless the assembly is big enough for it to actually make an effect. A small arm like this, gravity won't really make a change, so I'm going to leave it out. And the rest of these are not needed for this particular analysis. Then we mesh, then we run. Uh, there's two different kinds of mesh that we get inside of linear static. We get a standard mesh and we get curvature based mesh. I like to stick with curvature based mesh for single part files or small assemblies because it's going to make the mesh shrink in areas where there's small curves and areas where there's edges. That's going to make my results slightly more precise in those areas, more accurate if I've set it up correctly. So I like to stick with this one. Um, the danger is if you have a very large assembly and you have too much mesh, it can take a really long time to solve. So only in those big assembly scenarios am I going over and switching to standard mesh. Stick with this, I'll hit OK. We'll see that mesh. Uh, SOLIDWORKS, it has tetrahedrals, and that's actually the only shape that I have as an option. Uh, they kind of look like triangles when we're seeing it right here. Um, some other softwares might have squares or bricks. Tetrahedrals work great in SOLIDWORKS, and it's our only choice. Uh, once I've got that placed in here, I can run my analysis. So I can right click, I can run, and I'll get to look at some results. 
So I'm seeing some stress building up where I fix the motor to the arm and also some stress in the corners as that bends down. Uh, some nice things inside of the result types. I can see blow ups, pop ups for my max stress. Um, I've got a legend here on the right hand side that pinpoints where the yield strength is. If I had surpassed the yield strength, it would have shown up here in my legend saying, hey, you're above that yield. Uh, another way I can look at if my part is above yield, I can look at the factor safety plot. Uh, double clicking this over here and changing the numbers to something more reasonable like 0 to 5. I can see that the factor safety is well above 5 in most of the regions and the minimum is about 2.78. That is above the requirement that I needed of 2. So I'm good. This technically meets the requirements that I set for my analysis. Okay, so we're seeing my max stress, my factor of safety is a little bit above two. Um, you can see how easily I was able to set up that simulation test, that run, that would have taken a much longer time to test in real life on a machine. I can do this real quick inside of SOLIDWORKS. And I was able to find some potential problem areas. I could maybe allow a little bit more slippage between the arm and the motor. I could put, probably put some fillets or some rounded edges um, into the square cut here on my arm and that could help have this re reduce stress in this model. But I'm saying that it did work. I did meet the requirements I needed. So now I'm going to move forward and say, hey, can I make this design even better? Well, as I make it better, how do I monitor those changes and compare them against each other? Inside of static analysis, I have the trend tracker tool. The trend track will allow me to make design changes to the model and create a curve so I can watch it change over time. I'm going to be adding some slot cuts to the arm. This will let me reduce the weight, but I'll still be able to monitor and make sure the stress never gets too high. Okay, let me switch back to SOLIDWORKS and switch over to the trend tracker configuration. Um, I do recommend having other configurations if you're going to be making design changes to your model because those are permanent changes that are made to the part and if you have to log this back into a file management system or you already have drawings of the default part and you don't want those to update it's better to have a configuration somewhere else that doesn't affect those things. Uh, so let me duplicate this static study that I had before, right click duplicate Go to the trend tracker, I can give it a new name, hit OK. And now I can start making my changes. Um, looks like I have to rerun this, a little bit of caution symbol here, doesn't like what I've done. So let me run. OK, there's that first run, same data as before. Um, the way we start the trend tracker, we have to right click the study here at the top of the screen say trend tracker that turns the tool on and then I need to right click it again and say set a baseline. Uh, setting this baseline is going to save some screenshots of each of the individual result plots from my result folder and you can see those starting here in these graphs. If I double click one of them you see one data point was pulled out for the first iteration. Okay, now to start making some changes, some design changes to my model. Um, if I go to view and I go to all annotations, I can see some callouts for some important dimensions and I can start changing these. Let me do a 25 and a rebuild and an OK. Rerun this. Now I've got some new results and you can see that here in my trend tracker plot, it's starting to show the change over time. So let me go through and do a couple more and then we'll come back and take a look at this plot. And I think I'm going to stop right here because I'm seeing a huge deformation there in the arm. See that wobbling back and forth like that? That's probably I'm hitting my limit here. I don't want to go any further than this with these slot cuts. Um, so taking a look at uh, the plots from over here, I'll double click the stress plot 
And yes, definitely a huge spike there at the end as it started to wobble. Um, but looking at this trend, I can say, hey, look, the stress, yes, it was lowest at the beginning, but I'm also seeing it pretty low here in this third iteration. Uh, that was when I had the 30 millimeter slot length and the 2 millimeter radius. Let's see how that compares to my displacement graph. Yeah, that, that's not too bad either. The three, the third iteration is a little bit above the others, but it's not too far up. It hasn't drastically gone up yet in deformation. So I can probably add in some slots to be 30 millimeters, but two millimeters in radius, and that can reduce the weight in my model, but still keep the strength that I need. So to get back to that iteration, I can say, hey, let me restore that model to that third iteration. I'll hit this. I can hit iteration three, I hit OK. And it's taken me right back there. So I've been able to do my analysis, find and optimize my design for weight and stress, and now I can move on with uh, my design. Okay, so with Trend Tracker, we were able to easily monitor our design changes so that I could reduce the weight of the part. Um, with other types of things I was monitoring, I could also reduce the costs to create the model. I reduced the time for time-consuming prototyping by doing it like this, testing them very quickly against each other. Okay, so as we've gone through, um, we got to see the linear static analysis. We could figure out, does my arm work? We did this with some loads and some fixtures and run a quick simulation. Did it work? Yes, it did. So then I can move into the Trend Tracker tool to modify the design to make it better than it already is. Can I optimize this thing? So we were able to do that. Um, for the last couple things here for fatigue testing and motion analysis, we're going to take the loading on this arm and see how many cycles it can run on. And then in the motion analysis tool, I'm going to add the motors in for the entire assembly and see it move. And we can size the motors for the speed that I want the arm to be able to move at. Uh, so that's going to be done on October 9th. If you have any questions, please email me at spatel at goengineer.com, and I'll be happy to answer your questions. Uh, thanks for coming to see our webinar, and hope you come by another time. Mm -hmm.